Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, little, uh, little new piece of information here. IGN just did an interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki, and um, they do not talk about PvP. But there's a lot of uh, interesting bits of information, especially regarding the combat system. Alright, so let's read some uh, parts of the interview with Miyazaki. Uh, the interview was done by IGN, so I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to read it firsthand. But here, there's an interesting que question here. Um, The person asked the Souls game Bloodborne Sekiro, they always uh, have a very similar and distinct flavor of combat even though they're all fundamentally different in terms of their focus. Can you describe how the combat will work in Elden Ring and how it differs from pre previous games? <clears throat> and Miyazaki replied, we think rather than recommending a specific way for a player to tackle each encounter, one of the things we wanted to stress in this game was, again, that freedom to choose how to take on encounters and how to approach these various situations. There is a very large variety of ways you can approach combat and a large range of abilities you can acquire. This is quite interesting, abilities you can acquire. Throughout the trailer, we see a bunch of different techniques. We see a horse leaping up a cliffside an attack jumping of horseback and there's magic attack that extends your sword. Can you shed some light on these abilities? How they're earned? Does acquiring a technique lend itself to exploring more of the world? And the answer was yes. A part of making this new world with this huge sense of scale was adding enjoyment to that sense of exploration. Having players feel encouraged and give them a desire to explore as much as they want. And so that could be true acquiring new weapons, magic spells and abilities such as the different spirit summons. We wanted to place these elements so the players will enjoy exploring the map and discovering these elements for themselves. There are cases in which you can buy them, arts, magics, etc. Here they refer to it as arts, kind of like weapon arts it seems. Uh, you can buy them at stores or learn them from NPC, but generally they are hidden throughout the game's world for the player to discover through exploration, rather than unlocking them through a skill tree as in previous titles. Interesting. I think one of the things that's worth mentioning is the skills, so I think he's referring to the arts here, which is a returning feature from previous games, but check this out. But again, we're concentrating on the level of freedom that it gives to the player. So before, there were a certain skill attached to a certain weapon. Here, he's referring to weapon arts. Now you're actually able to freely interchange skills between a large variety of weapons. Okay. <laughs> there are, I believe, around 100 skills in total. That's crazy. Obviously, you're free to combine your different skills with different weapons. You're free to build your character with different weapons and equipments. You're free to learn magic as well. So if you throw all of these things, we think that the build customization is going to be richer and even more varied than before. Okay, so now, now, now this is where we get into the interesting territory. I want to emphasize this... Uh, little excerpt here where he says so before there was there was a skill attached to a certain weapon I mean this is really referring to weapon arts and now you're actually f able to freely interchange skills between a ver variety of weapons it doesn't say between all weapons and I think uh, I think it's pr pretty clear here that you know from is not stupid I don't think they're gonna give you like say a, a broken fast weapon art on a uh, you know the the slowest of weapon like for instance imagine if uh, an ultra weapon had like the freed weapon art pretty much you know I don't think we're gonna see stuff like that but maybe maybe the claymore is gonna come in with a built-in gun deer charge <laughs> who knows like maybe you're gonna be able to do stuff like that 
and that kind of brings the discussion about uh, what is the purpose of weapon swapping because you know how we made weapon swapping very popular in Dark Souls 3 and some people really enjoy that and some people don't like that but uh, I'd like to emphasize that when I started weapon swapping the whole idea of weapon swapping was to bring more attacks uh, to kind of broaden a limited moveset from X or Y weapon so they're pretty much addressing that uh, that problem I mean it's not really a problem but that lack the lack of depth that some of the other weapons had in say Dark Souls 3 where you have only a certain amount of attacks and maybe these attacks are not necessarily enough to to make a weapon viable or to have a move set varied enough but here if you have the ability the ability to kind of customize your move set li a little bit it kind of it kind of kills or not necessarily kills because it's always nice to have more options but uh, it does certainly address the issue of weapons not having a good enough move set or a varied enough move set uh, i think it's definitely a good thing and it could definitely uh, shut the need for weapon swapping or swapping, uh, you know, stuff out of menu. Not saying that it's not necessarily going to be in there. Or maybe you can swap skills on the fly. We don't know, but this is definitely something to consider. And it is actually addressing the need for swapping directly built into the game. So this is definitely something we should look forward to and something very interesting. We know that the assets they're reusing is mostly from Dark Souls 3 as well. So, like looking at the trailer, it's fairly obvious. In uh, my trailer analysis, we go through a lot of these reused animations. And uh, for those of us who play Dark Souls 3 a lot, it's definitely a good thing and a nice addition and a welcome. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a welcome thing to see a lot of familiar elements. But what's fun here that's coming up is that now that we know that quote unquote weapon arts are going to be interchangeables interchange interchangeable sorry we have a basis to speculate so we can sort of do this fun exercise here where i mean it's not necessarily going to be super accurate but it does have some feet to land on the weapon arts that we know are probably going to be mixed with move sets that we also know so obviously new things are going to come up like for instance in the trailer we see this uh this sword that um is held in the air and then strikes the floor with a beam of blue light right something like that the animation itself is not new the effect that comes with it is new um, probably the range is going to be modified, the damage, stuff like that, but that's not really important. What's what's the key here is that the animation is sort of the same, and um, that can that can spark us to, to think about what kind of weapon combination would you like to see or would we like to see in the game. So, like I mentioned earlier, like, as a joke, the Gundyr Claymore, because, you know, <laughs> I always go from Claymore to Gundyr, but now if the Claymore has the Gundyr weapon art built into it, you don't need to swap the Gundyr anymore, right? But what other weapons would be cool to, uh, to imagine having certain weapon arts? Now that's a better question. So here for me, I brought up the, uh, the Frexter Life page with all the weapons, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking... Well, obviously, they're not gonna, you know, give weapon arts that are completely unrelated to, like, certain weapon classes, for for instance. Like, I'm looking at this, and I do not see, like, an Ultra Greatsword getting the, uh, I don't know, I'm looking at this and getting, like, I don't know, a, uh, a Falchion weapon art, right? <laughs> like, you know, this little crazy spin, like, obviously would be kind of broken, wouldn't have crazy range. I mean, broken, maybe not, I don't know, actually, but, you know, I'm looking at this and looking at these weapon arts. A lot of these weapon arts tend to be on the slower side, so that's definitely a good thing toward balance, but what I'm, I mean, worried, I'm not really worried, honestly. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but 
I'm going to say it anyway. What I, what I would be worried about is, say, a weapon that's very slow, very powerful, that does a lot of damage, being able to have access to <clears throat> a fast weapon art. Although, to be fair, like I said, I'm not really worried about that because that's sort of like basic um, uh, basic balance. Like, even though people like to, you know, bad mouth the balance in the Souls games as to, like, there's always something very overpowered. Like, the Cartus Curve Sword, the, the Curve Sword, the Daggers and whatnot. But, I mean, the balance issues with the previous game is not really in the realm of, like, obvious stuff like this right there. Like, um... You know, for instance, let me give you the example of the Murky Hensight being uh, one of the two best weapon in Dark Souls 3, right? Or the Harp, really. The Harp and the Murky Hensight are pretty much the same weapon. But the Harp has been out since the release of Dark Souls 3. And it was only until like two years and a half down the road that people realized that the Harp was one of the best weapon. It took two years and a half of PvP for people to realize that the harp was a top weapon. So even though it seems very obvious to everyone now, um, when the game was out, it was not that obvious. Uh, stuff like Cartus Curve Sword that did a lot of damage, was very fast, had a lot of range. That's more obvious, but again, it's not like it was an ultra great sword having the that had like the Cartus Curve Sword move set, for instance. So I don't really see uh, weapons like, you know, Great Hammers or Ultras having this ex extremely fast option for weapon arts. But we can still do a fun exercise, exercise and try to mismatch some weapon arts and give it to another weapon just to, you know, think about what would be good and what wouldn't. So yeah, at the end of the day, there's definitely a lot of things that are possible with this. A lot of lots of options. But again, bottom line is, from what we know now, we know that some weapon arts are going to be interchangeable. Uh, it's fun to do this exercise to try to figure out which is which goes well with what, what we're going to be using in Elden Ring and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I believe um, they're going to be using some of those Dark Souls 3 assets for mixing and, and matching the weapons. That's going to be very fun to play around with to try on different weapons. I just hope that it's not stuck between one class because, as I said earlier, you will most likely end up with the best weapon arts for one class given to the weapon that does the most damage or is the longer. And you would effect effectively make one weapon kind of king for each class, which is the one that has most range damage and you just give it the best moveset. So as long as it's not that, I think it's going to be a very good and fun addition. And... Um, until then, uh, guys, post whatever type of combination you would like to see in the comments. I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this vid. Uh, take care, everyone. Really appreciate you guys for watching. And uh, I'll catch you guys up next time.